probably one of the most important things for middle schoolers is that they feel connected and um, to take a large population like 1,225 kids and create something that they feel a part of, we decided to go ahead and create three schools in one. The facility itself is intended to serve students uh, at three levels with an intention and a commitment by the staff to be a school within a school within a school. And where the eighth graders would be up on the third floor, seventh graders on the second floor, and the sixth graders would be on the first floor, where they form their own school, if you will, on that level. So there, there'll be some interaction between different grade levels, maybe some passing time here and there, but each grade level is forming their own identity. There's actually going to be three levels of operation in that facility. It looks large, and is, from the outside. Uh, but we expect it to be a fairly well-contained grade-by-grade grade system. On a common day, um, most of the uh, students will spend their core time, which are their academic classes, English language arts, mathematics, science, and social studies on that floor. And they will move from class to class within that floor. In the middle school we have all these support systems set up. So the school within a school is just another support system. All these people that know the kids. When you look at the middle school and the middle school concept, it's all about building relationships and getting students comfortable in order to learn. You need relationships. And our teachers build, build professional and meaningful relationships with their students. These students won't care how much we can teach them until they know how much we care. Within those levels, they'll be broken into teams, and each grade level will have four teams, which will be housed pretty close together so the teachers can work hand in hand with one another. The way that works is that you have four core teachers, math, English, social studies, science, who work with a set group of kids. Those set group of kids also have a counselor that is assigned to them. They have an administrator assigned to them. The teams are truly what makes a middle school because when you have teams and these schools within a school, that is truly the middle school concept. It allows all the elements of a middle school to come into play. Actually, they get to know each other very well and, and they get to know their teachers real well and ends up that overall their learning is improved. So that sense of belonging is about our, us knowing their name right away and they have a place to go. They have a place to go if they can't open their locker. Um, they have a place to go if they are lost their lunch money or they have to call home. So you, you feel like you belong not to this great big school with 1,200 kids in it, but you're in that smaller group setting. So it doesn't seem over, so overwhelming for them. The teams are really a great part of middle school. By working with three other teachers, um, collaborating every day, talking about students, it helps you become a better teacher. We meet every day, we can talk about the kids, we can recognize that it's not just an issue in one class and, and conversations can be had. We meet with parents on a regular basis. What it creates is a professional learning community within the school. It kind of fits with the teams as well. We're trying to be like other professions now, lawyers and doctors. I mean, they talk amongst themselves all the time about best practices and that's what team planning time is about how to meet the needs of those kids. You're not on your own, you're working with other teachers in order to fulfill those needs. But there are a lot of things that go into the PLC, but the four questions, uh, main questions are, what do we want students to learn? Um, how do we know they've learned it? And what are we gonna do if they don't succeed and don't learn? And the other one that we've added to that is, what do we do with the students that they've already learned the material? Um, you identify the essential content that all students are going to receive. So at the very base level, all students are going to receive this content and these skills. And then we look at our data and see how well did your students do, how well did my students do. For example, in one unit, one teacher's students might do great, and the other teacher's students might not do as well. And so then they can work together. What did you do differently in, in your instruction? What was your best practice? Why did you do it this way? What did you do? How can I learn from that? And the teachers themselves in these professional learning communities have these discussions about these individual students as well as groups on how they can get the material across in the best way for each individual student. It's not just for a class. It's no longer um, 
mass education. It's individualized learning to make sure every student uh, meets their maximum potential. And it kind of sets up a program, if you will, within that middle school concept because now we can arrange our schedule, for example, an enrichment class. We can take a group of students who might be struggling in a certain area, it could be math, language arts, social studies, science, kind of bring them up to speed a little bit on some content, some skills. And this way they can measure, are, are my kids learning or do they already know this material and where do we go from here? Do we need to reteach a lesson? Do we need to accelerate some kids or move them on? Or are some kids right where they need to be? Um, another part about PLC that I think is so critical is that all of the teachers are learning every day. By looking at the data, by watching their students grow and learn, they are learning new concepts, how to do things better, and really how to make Royal Oak the best middle school in the nation. I think the most unique thing about Royal Oak Middle School is the fact that it is a uh, a marriage of the past with the present with a lot of planning for the purposes of educating students into the future. And I'm hoping that other people from around the county, from Oakland County, will come to visit the building and really see the value that can be had in a school district maintaining a building that's so special to them um, and really putting the funds into it. You know, we could never do this in a new facility today. The fact of the matter is we've wed the history of Royal Oak with this facility with all of the new technology. And the basic fact is this is better than new. This is better than new.